from fast food to pet food. It's a market worth an estimated two billion pounds each year in this country. And pet owners are becoming more discerning as to what they feed their animals. Healthy options are increasingly in demand. Our next entrepreneurs, Daniel Eyre and Matt Cockroft, hope their new dog food will find a place in the market. Hi there, I'm Daniel and this is Matt and we're from Pure Pet Food. We've come here today seeking a £40,000 investment for a 10% stake in our business. Pure manufactures a range of dehydrated dog food products. The unavailability of low processed and natural options has actually led to a number of owners beginning to feed a raw or a home prepared diet to their pets. Although the idea of raw feeding or home cooking is a fantastic idea in principle, in reality it can actually cause a lot of inconvenience for owners. Pure allows them to conveniently feed a low processed food with real nutritional integrity, just like a raw or a home prepared food, but crucially retains all the convenience of a commercial pet food product. Pure launched eight months ago, receiving fantastic coverage from both local and national press. Since then, Pure has been launched in over 100 pet specialist stores. This first eight months culminated in Pure being awarded the Pet Product Innovation of the Year Award by world-renowned industry body Petquip. We feel this is a fantastic opportunity to be involved in a young and exciting company placed in a market that has defied recession and sits at the high growth end of the sector. Uh, we'll now take any questions and if any of you have skipped lunch and are feeling brave, we'd more than welcome you to give it a quick try. Delivering their vision for a nutritious dog food. Thank you. This Yorkshire duo want £40,000 for a 10% stake in their company. Thank you very much. But are any of the dragons willing to put their mouth where their money is? Daniel, Matt, hello. Hi there. You said about trying it. Could you grab the bowl and try it for me? Yeah, I'll have a small bit. I, uh, you just, you just I normally deal with uh, developing the recipes. So. No, you just take a few mouthfuls and then, <laughs> while you've taken a few mouthfuls, tell me what dog food tastes like. It's a very meaty consistency, which is obviously, and taste, sorry, which is obviously fantastic for dogs. There's liver, uh, muscle meat in there. Yeah. Uh, I have just eaten, so I won't eat tremendous amounts of it, but more than happy to eat it. Sorry, can I smell it? Yep. I think you passed Peter's little test there. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. With the challenge over, Deborah Meaden, who has previously invested in a pet's treats business, now wants to understand more about what goes into this product. Is anything lost in this process? What hasn't this got that raw food has got? I would say that the fruit and veg in it is technically classed as raw, uh, and it's only been air dried, and the meats have only been air dried to a temperature where it's removed the risk of the pathogens, but it's not harmed the natural amino acids in the meat. We often call it raw without the thaw. It's as, as close to raw or a fresh food as you can, you can get, really. We're, we're backed by a, a few of the leading vets throughout the UK now who recommend pure. You've been in business eight months. Yep. And how many have you sold again? Uh, turnover's just been over £35,000 to... And so how much is each one? Uh, those smaller bags are priced between around £7 to uh, £10. Typically, you, you pedigree chum type uh, biscuits. Is are a this bit expensive? I have no well, idea. Well, wet foods, for instance, are, are priced above that generally. It's not something where we're creating a new, uh, you know, a new ceiling on the, on the price. It, it's very much what people are paying for good quality foods already. And, and why are you going to win in that you know, enormous pet food market with huge brands out there that you know, could do this in a heartbeat? What stops somebody? Just copying this stuff. Well, we've got no proprietary, uh, yeah. you know, rights on it. Just because it is such a simple process, I guess the, probably That's the main. That's not a good thing. Uh, yeah, I, okay. I know, but I, I guess the the main uh, thing that stops a lot of the larger companies, presumably, is the minute they start making this product, it's ringing alarm bells to everyone else that this thing that we're making billions of pounds out of every year is not adequate anymore. Well, they do until the day they see you making billions of pounds, and then they... Correct. Well, we've already got a bit of a first-mover advantage. Word does spread quite quickly, and people aren't referring to it as dehydrated food. They already refer to it as pure food, and it's, it's becoming generic. Hours, which is great. I mean, I've got to hand it to you guys. 
to be fair, it looks like a good product. Um, you, you've done your homework. I just, and I'm, I'm really trying to get behind you on this one <laughs> because I think, I think you're great, but I just don't get the market and I'm not going to waste your time. I wish you all the best, but I'm out. There's lots of goodwill towards Daniel and Matt, but the niche appeal of their product isn't for everyone. With Piers Linney gone, four dragons remain, including pet food investor Deborah Meaden. Obviously, to be fair to anybody I invest in, I need to think about the relationship between any existing investment and any new investment. So I was sitting here thinking, would it be fair? So I think if I'm very clear and open with you, then I think there is a way that I can be fair. There would be certain things that we would do on our own as pure. But I would have to join those together at some point because otherwise I'm going to feel conflicted. You're going to look at me and think, whose interest has she got at heart? But, you know, you'd have to believe me that I would make sure that everybody got the best out of it. So you'd have all the benefits of, of uh, the contacts. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 30% of the business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. With her experience and her connections, Deborah Meaden serves up an inviting offer but there's still time for other dragons to take her on. Guys, you, you, uh, you've been fantastic. You've made, you've made dog food almost cool in the den, which is amazing. <laughs> and the fact that you even then ate your own product, I'm kind of thinking, <laughs> these guys are committed. My issue is that I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced, potentially without some sort of link, perhaps Deborah has, the size of the potential business and the speed at which you could, can get a decent income out of it. I'm going to say that I'm out, but wish you every bit of luck that you clearly deserve. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Um, <clears throat> Daniel, Matt. I, I agree with Peter. I think you, you pitched very, very well probably one of the best pitches I've seen in the den in, in 10 years. Um, you obviously know your stuff. Um, I, I, I love the brand as well, the pure considerant you're selling. Um, I really don't think there's anything I can add to your business. Okay. So I don't think it'd be fair for me to make an offer. So for that reason only, I'm going to wish you the best of luck. I think you do fantastic, but I'm out. Okay, thank you. Okay. Kelly Hoppen is the only dragon remaining. Will she compete with Deborah Meaden's offer? Guys, um, I don't have a dog, but my daughter and stepdaughters have always had animals. And every person I know that has a dog seems to look after their dog as well as they look after their children. So there's definitely a market there. What I do know is that you need good marketing, which I can help you with. I love the name, I like the packaging, I think both of you are great. So I'd like to make you an offer for the full amount, but I'd like 20% of the business. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A surprise move from Kelly Hoppen, who, despite not even owning a dog, has undercut Deborah Meaden. The entrepreneurs now have to weigh up one dragon's marketing guile against another one's first-rate contact book. Would either of you potentially be able to go slightly lower at all on those equity levels? I wouldn't, and I'd, I'll tell you why. The biggest thing I can add for you is to open doors. Now, I can do that instantly. Yeah. And I can make a big difference to this small business. I also don't want to drop um, the percentage. I feel that I could help you grow this business very quickly. And I would enjoy doing it, which is most important for yeah, that's me. Good. Are we okay to have a quick chat? Yeah. Yeah. 
Hadi. Uh, well, firstly, thank you very much for your offers. We really appreciate all, the, all, all your time. Out of the two offers, just because of the, the contacts that were possible, we're looking at, at Deborah's offer. Uh, but we're not comfortable giving away that, that amount of the company at this stage. And you know, we've worked so hard to get it to where it is now and we believe in it so much. And the complication of your other brands as well, we don't feel comfortable with that, do we? I think it's something where, although we appreciate you guys, we generally believe we, we can do it. We want to give it a go and we feel we can get there. I think you'll regret that decision. <laughs> Really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you very Good much. Good luck, guys. Good luck. See you later. Daniel and Matt snub both offers and walk away without any investment. To the astonishment of the den. I sort of admire them for that business. It's crazy. To be honest, they should have taken the offer. But, but what I do think is what I liked is that if they're uncomfortable, I'd rather know now. We were always cautious that there might be some conflict of interest there. and what she proposed and the equity stake, in the end it was just a bit a bit too much for us to be honest. It, it just didn't feel right. Hello Dragons. My name's David and I'm here to promote Maximat. I'm looking for an investment of fifty thousand pounds. Maximat is an odour absorbing mat for dogs. Using a number of filters within the mat, it actually absorbs the smell from a dog. Um, the filters are replaced every three months. There's two sizes. The retail price of the large mat is 20 quid, and the smaller mat will cost 15 pounds. This product is not only useful for dogs, it can be used on shoes. So if you've got a smelly pair of feet, take your shoes off, put this mat over the top of them, and it will actually absorb the smell. We're hoping to use it for the dogs initially, but the second line promotion is to use it for shoes and trainers as well. There's nothing like it in the UK, there's nothing like it in Europe, and as far as I'm aware, there's nothing like it in the world. So you can see the potential. Thank you. David is offering a 10% stake in his company in return for the £50,000 he needs. All he has to do now is convince the dragons his odour absorbing mat is worth investing in. So, tell me first of all, how did you come in? You do, you're a dog owner? No. No, You've my... got smelly shoes? I've got smelly shoes. So and... is that how you got interested in it? No, my brother-in-law, who's my partner, he's got a number of dogs and they smell. And he was trying to think of a way of making the dog less smelly. He's been using one of these for 12 months. Over that period of time, not only the dog, but the actual room loses that smell. So you can walk into the lounge now and you don't smell dog. But some dog owners perhaps like the smell of their own dog. Um, I've yet to meet one, to be honest. I mean, we, we've put well, this product... I, I, I can tell you, I'm one. You like the smell of your dog? Absolutely, because I keep the dog clean and I, I wouldn't want to, to put a dog on a, on a mat that gives it some sort of sweet rose smell. It I mean, doesn't it's... give it a sweet rose smell. What does it what do? What it does is it absorbs the smell from the dog. And when the, the dog walks away, does the dog then... Is it free from its, its dog smell? The more the dog uses the mat, the, fr the fresher the dog. It's not going well. Peter Jones clearly has reservations about the product. It seems David has found himself pitching to the one millionaire investor who actually likes the smell of his dog. Rachel Elmore has also got concerns. Do you have any business experience? Yeah, no, I've run um, uh, some businesses before. And have they been profitable? Yes. One so was... what happened to them? Well, one was a sunbed business. Why aren't you doing that anymore? The unfortunate thing was working full time on my day job and then doing the... What's the, what's the day job? Uh, IT. And you're still going to do the day job? No. I'm, I'm due to... At the moment I'm contracting um, and I'm so due to... you're going to give up your IT job for the dog odour eater? Yeah. If we get this off the ground, you know, there'll be nothing better than seeing this in the shops. We feel that this is the one. Although David thinks his product is the one, the dragons are yet to be convinced, Doug Richard in particular. I, I honestly don't understand what problem you're solving. So hear me out, I'm a dog owner. Okay. I got a retriever, um, not the smartest dog in the world, but certainly ranks up there as being one of the more smelly dogs. 
You know, she's she's just rich, ripe yeah. with odor. And there's, our current solution to that problem is my children wash the dog. Now, my dog has a mat. It's actually a blanket. My dog loves her blanket. You know why she loves her blanket? It smells. It smells of her. Yeah. Now, eventually, that blanket gets to a point where we think, that smells a little bit too much like our dog. So we wash it. It seems to me that a large portion of the world has a blanket and a washing machine. So the real question is not whether or not it works, but whether or not people care. Are you really solving a problem here? Yeah, all dogs smell, whether you like the smell or not. A lot of dog owners we found are conscious that a room smells of the dog. But it's not like we're going to stop washing our dog. If there's no problem, there's no need for a solution. Doug Richard is having major problems with the concept of MaxiMat. David needs £50,000, but he's struggling to interest any of the dragons in his business. Peter Jones is preparing to bail out. David, firstly, I think I'd, I'd like a ticket to your planet because uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. I think that what you've come in with today um, is just not an opportunity, let alone a business opportunity for an investment. I don't believe anybody will put any money into that. I think you're running down a very dangerous road to currently give up your day job to go and sell um, that type of product. If you don't sell anything, you are in real trouble. And I just question, really, why you've even turned up today. So I just want to say, you're not going to get a penny from me today. The first dragon is out. David's mat has completely failed to impress Peter Jones. And his chance of getting the £50,000 he came for looks small. Rachel Elnor is still in, but she needs convincing. David, how are you going to distribute this? How are you going to sell it? Through shops? We've got um, a website currently under construction. We want to advertise it, radio, TV. TV? Do you know how website. much a TV ad costs? Yes. How much? For a, a package of adverts within one of the regional TVs, you can get 32 slots. For £50,000? No, no, for less than that. It's, it works out about £25,000. David, you don't want to go and just put money into TV advertising until you prove to yourself and to others. You need to start testing sales. We've, we've, we've tested this product with friends and family. Now, I'm talking about getting an editorial in your local newspaper, putting it on sale in some local shops, and seeing if you can make some sales. Yeah. Have you tried that? We haven't tried it as yet. Like I say... Because if you came to me and told me that you'd sold 100, I'd believe it, you'd believe it, an investor would believe it. Mm. David is unable to prove there's a market for his product. While Simon Woodruff is trying to help him out with some practical advice, Doug Richard decides to get straight to the point. It is the number one responsibility to yourself and to an investor <clears throat> to prove a concept. You have jumped over a step. You've proved it to yourself in your mind, to no one else, and you're about to take my money and spend it in a heroically inappropriate fashion because 50,000 pounds will get you nothing in the way of advertising on TV. It will get you not enough impressions to make an impression. And you will therefore go to zero and be out of business. And you will never know whether it was because it was a failure of capital or a failure of product. Like I said, we have tested the product. Testing the product. Look, it. you can't just give it to friends and family and test the product. You have to find a stranger who gives you cash. That's we have, testing a product. We have had strangers, as you put okay, it, buy the product. They, they, well, I know, anyways, go. I apologize. Go. I am out. Doug Richard has given up on David and his maximat. With him and Peter Jones out, David could be in real danger of losing his chance for investment. I think this has got all the ingredients of a classic business failure. You've got an innovative idea, but not quite unique enough for someone to go out and specially buy it. You've got bags of optimism combined with just total naivety about the amount of marketing spend you're going to have to do to get there. I just... I don't see it working, and I, I, I worry for you, actually. There's and no I need to worry Peter. for me. I worry for you giving everything up and all your savings and putting everything into this, because... That's I think how much it's a I believe very, in the product. very steep business hill to climb. So I won't be investing, sorry. Rachel Elnor is also out. David came to the Dragon's Den for £50,000, but there are just two dragons left. Simon Woodruff and Duncan Bannatyne, who's not in a forgiving mood. When you walk into the bank and you ask the bank manager for a loan, and he says no, all your friends and family tell you the bank manager's wrong. When you go to an investor and he says no, all your friends and family said the investor's wrong. You've got a fantastic idea. But one day you have to wake up to the reality and understand 
that your friends and family are wrong and you're wrong because this is not going to sell, no one's going to invest in it and I'm definitely not going to invest in it. It seems David's hopes of success are fading away. Peter Jones, Doug Richard, Rachel Elnor and Duncan Bannatyne are all out. Simon Woodruff is his last hope. David, um, I'm contrary to some cynics around me here. I think that you've got a good product and I think you're absolutely spot on that TV advertising is exactly the right way to do it. Um, back of Sunday colour supplements, all of that, exactly, even shopping channels. And I, I would have thought there was an enormous market, but you've got to prove that something sells on something which you don't know like that. And you didn't do it, and that's why I'm not investing. Go away and you'll find an investor if you sell some. But I'm not investing. Thanks. So after a crushing experience in the Dragon's Den, David has failed to secure an investment. But he's leaving the Dragons divided over him and his product. He could sell shed loads of those. Why don't you invest then? You'd need to Sorry? sell Why don't you warehouse invest loads. Because to make it's any not money. proven. It's, not it's shed simple loads. as that. I bet he goes away now and tests it. He's gonna go back to his wife and say I we're gonna so. test this. I he's hope learned so something for his today. Sake. Maybe. But we don't have to beat the guy up because he's somebody who's taken the trouble to get off his ass and yeah. find a way out That's and to sit the there with with all of you guys beating him up as if he's we're some dragons and he's something give them some encouragement i feel for him because he is going to fail and lose his money if he doesn't lose so that money educate him but don't beat him up That's like he's what some we big deal businessman to do trying to if you listen. i didn't hear that at all i just oh, i you, heard what you he got advice from every listening. single one of us Listening to all of that, four out of five of them were sceptics, severe sceptics. You're still going to give up the other job, give up the day job and pursue it? Yep. It's still there. I mean, whatever they say, one, one of the chats was quite complimentary, the others were uh, a bit dismissive. But I think one of the things that was, that was worrying them was that you were convinced of the product to a degree beyond any sort of reasonable evidence that you had. If I was pessimistic about the actual saleability of the product or whether it worked, then I wouldn't be here because I wouldn't like to sell something that doesn't work. We believe in the product and whether they believe in it or not, it doesn't matter. Last into the den, a husband and wife team, Anesha Sue Broyan and Jack Walker, who brought a four-legged friend along to help with their pitch. So this is Smudgy White Socks. She's nearly 10 years old and she's very much the inspiration behind the business. The duo have turned their love of pets into an all-consuming business idea. There is no date night, there's just cat and dog shows. And our pillow talk is pet food, but you know, that's fine. Is that cat looking at you or is that cat looking at me? Because I'm feeling quite stared out. The entrepreneurs have one of the five investors in particular in their sights. We want to work with a dragon that's passionate about animal welfare as much as we are. Um, I think Deborah's the obvious choice. Getting an investment from the dragons would be a game changer for us. They'd be barking mad not to back us. Hi dragons, I'm Anasia, this is Jack and this is Smudge. There's actually a fourth member of our team, Boo the Cat, but she's not here for obvious reasons, so we have brought her teddy replica. So we're Scrumbles and we make responsible cat and dog food that promotes great gut health and we'd love you to invest £60,000 for a 10% stake in our company. So like any pet parent, we've had to deal with our fair share of vet trips and we had a really bad patch with our cat Boo and the only thing that was settler was a probiotic paste that we got from the vet. That really revealed to us the importance of gut health and probiotics. But having taken a closer look, we couldn't find a brand that would deliver on gut health and was both responsible and affordable. So we decided to create our own. What makes our food great um, is that combination of wholesome natural ingredients plus functional elements like probiotics. So our food's really easy to digest, great for sensitive tummies, and we call it scrumbalicious. We're now going to pass around a selection of products for you guys to look at, and then we welcome any questions. Come on, Smudgy. Gut-friendly food for cats and dogs is the business idea that Croydon couple, Anasia and Jack, are hoping will win over the dragons. Oh, look. Is that good? I've got very good fingernails for dog scratching. 
They're asking for £60,000 in return for a 10% stake in their company. Say bye for me. Say, good girl. Team second. Deborah Meaden's love of animals is common knowledge. And it looks like she knows only too well the benefits of a premium pet food. I get really boring at this moment because you've got me on my specialist subject. I had a cat with IBD, so I spent my life um, searching the right, you know, the right combination of food. But we kept him alive, and really, I put it down to probiotics and prebiotics. So your your big selling point, because I see it's not showing on your on your dog product, for the cats is probiotic. Yes. So where does it say probiotics? I don't think you can say probiotics. Can I ask them, Tej? I know you're an expert in this field, but I would like to know what they know, not what you know. Just so helping what's out. Our... Yeah, no, thank you. I'd like to know what they know. So what can you claim on your packaging? So we can claim that we have added probiotics um, and we can say that that can help with sensitive tummies. Why is it not on the packaging then? So those are the treats and the wet food. They don't have probiotics. It's on our dry food and it's, it says added probiotics And here. you state it on there. So I'm glad I listened to the experts because they, well, actually, they, no, you said you can't put probiotics. Well, I, I can say what I want and I can make a comment if I like. Thank you. Tej Lalvani and Deborah Meaden clash over the probiotic claims of the product. Tuka Suleiman has a wealth of retail experience behind him, and his ears have pricked up at the pitcher's pet food proposition. I've already invested in a dog business, okay. in silicon dog toys. Um, and, and of course, w w when I look at anything in dogs, it just wakes me up and says, is there an opportunity? But. I'm a bit worried about your branding. I feel that it's not prominent enough. Okay. It looks faded. Maybe it needs another colour rather than the white to really stick out. I think it's a good point on the yellow. I can't even read the yellow with yeah, the white. That's what I'm saying. The white actually is not strong enough to read the brand from a distance. What's been really fun with this is actually we've identified the colours that cats and dogs respond to. Cats and dogs are not your buyers. Tuka Suleiman wonders if the entrepreneurs are barking up the wrong tree with the colour scheme they've chosen for their products. Tej Lalvani now wants to find out if the gut-friendly pet food has racked up any sales. When did you launch and how much have you sold to date? So we closed our first financial year on Friday. OK. And we delivered £101,000. What was your net profit? Minus 70. Seven zero? Yeah. OK. And how much money have you invested in the business so far? So, personally, we've invested £130,000. OK, wow. So, what are you guys projecting for this new year coming up? So, we'll hit 320000 this year. And we'll probably make a modest loss of about 20000 So, at what point does this business start to make any money? So, we're aiming to make a profit in year three. What's your forecast then for year three? We think we will hit a million. A million? And then what will your profit be on that? £75,000. And what's your salary in forecast for this year? We don't take a salary. You just work for free? <laughs> work Sadly. for ourselves. We're in it, we're we're for the long to term. our first Peace paycheck. Out. Right. It's tough. This is a tough, isn't it? Did it not worry you? I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. You and enjoy working, not taking a salary? I think when you do something... I don't enjoy not having a salary. Yeah, of course. We enjoy working with one another. And what happens to the company if you two fall out and get divorced? That would never happen to us. Peter Jones discovers the pet-loving pair are yet to earn a living from their business. Sara Davies is now ready to have her say on the natural pet food proposition. I know you're looking for an investor to come on board who's, who's passionate about animal welfare. And it's not that I'm not passionate about that. Yeah. Very much a dog lover, just not a dog or a cat owner. It's a space that I don't understand. So unfortunately, this isn't a one for me. And I'm out. Sara Davies isn't invested in the product 
and declined the opportunity to invest in the business. Tuka Suleiman has intimated he's interested in any dog-related enterprise. Is he ready to rumble with scrumbles? At the end of the day, I have to go with my business instincts. Mm -hmm. and, and I am not in a position to wait three, four, five years for my, for my money. So I'm going to say those words, which I don't really want to say, because I think you're very, very credible. But it's not an investment for me. Therefore, I'm out. Thank you. OK, thank you, Tovia. The length of time that you're predicting to get to a point where this can actually make money, mm -hmm. to actually even sustain a, a lifestyle for you as a couple, that really worries me. So I think what you've pitched actually might be a, a, a treat for dogs and cats, but it's not a treat for an investor. So well, I'm uh, going to tell you where I am. OK. It's just not for me. I'm out. Peter Jones has a gut feeling the gut-friendly product isn't going to bring rich returns. Tej Lalvani made his millions in vitamins. Does he think there's a marriage between his health products for humans and their health food for pets? I think you guys are great. I think there's an opportunity here to grow but I think it's, it's going to require quite a bit of money and time to build a brand. Building a brand is expensive. Ah, uh, look, it's a difficult one, guys. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you where I am. Unfortunately, it's not what you want to hear. It's not for me, I'm out. Tej Lalvani thinks the cash required overrides the market opportunity and becomes the fourth dragon out. Only Deborah Meaden remains. And it seems she has concerns about the protection the pair have on their product. The problem is, for me, is that everything you're doing is very easy to replicate. Thank you. Can I say one more thing, Deborah, before you make a decision? Um, I absolutely agree that most of the things that we're doing can be copied in some way or form. But I think why our customers come to us is because they, they identify with us and our story and they trust us to do right by their cat and dog. All right, I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wouldn't let me go out anyway, would you? You were just going to no. keep talking until I finally surrendered. So I'm going to offer you £60,000. I want 20% of the business. The entrepreneurs, in passion defence of their product, wins over Deborah Meaden and she tables a bid. She takes more time. More time? Absolutely. But in return for the £60,000 the pair are seeking, she's asking for a 20% stake in their business, twice what the couple are willing to give away. It's more than wanted to give. Yeah, I really, I really like her. Yeah. Let's make a counter-offer. Yeah. Can you do it? And it's clear they haven't finished negotiating. So, thank you very much for your offer, Deborah. We really respect that you understand the industry. But if we were able to get your money back after a period of three years, would you be happy to reduce your stakeholding to 15%? You see, that's counterintuitive. So we worked together for three years to build the value of the business and the brand. And at the end of that three years, when we have built the business and the brand, my stake reduces. Does that sound appealing? If you were up to... Sure. No, for you, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. me. Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to find a compromise between the, the two positions. Honestly, no. Okay. 
I think on, on, on that basis, Deborah will have to respectfully decline. But thank you very much for your offer. OK. Whoa. OK, good luck, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Good Appreciate luck, guys. Nice to meet you. Bye. All the best. Deborah Meaden refuses to change her terms and Jack does what few entrepreneurs dare do in the den and rejects her offer. The husband and wife team leave without their preferred dragon on board and with one half of the partnership left somewhat confused about the way it played out. I thought you were going to say yes. You should have heard of you, wanted. A little bit speechless at the moment. I kind of wanted to say yes. <laughs> Those secret signals that we were supposed to give each other, work, they didn't quite work. Because so, when yeah. he said, unfortunately, I was like... <laughs> Blimey. Well, See that coming? Yeah, I, I mean, don't think they have any idea how much work they've got ahead of them. I think they're going to regret that. So I think kind of jumped in there. Oh, OK, all right, well...